Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Uh, a frequently asked question, is, and it's a, a topic that is really getting ready to come into full uh, favor right now, and that is the proper placement of your nest boxes. Uh, early February to mid-February, we really recommend to have your, uh, especially bluebird boxes, you know, most of your, really your nest boxes as a whole, uh, ready for the nesting season and place. And a lot of people are adding bluebird boxes and wren houses, things like that this time of year. But we all, they're always asked, we get asked a lot, you know, where should I put it? What's the best place to put it? Well, there are tons of different nest boxes out there. Uh, and the, the question is hard to answer for because they're different parts of the country, different birds you're, you're trying to attract your nest boxes. Uh, so I'm going to kind of do a broad stroke um, the, the approach to placing your nest boxes and give you choices. And I'm give you a resource where you can go uh, and look up for uh, the specific species that you may be interested in. But first and foremost, what are nest, nest boxes? Why, why do we even have them? Well, what we're doing uh, is emulating nature. Um, there are many species of birds that are cavity nesters. Can they they nest internally in trees and structures? Uh, and why other well other birds, you know, like cardinals, they just build a cup nest in uh, a shrub. They will not nest in a nest box structure. So not all birds are cavity nesters. Hummingbirds aren't cavity nesters, etc. Well, the, the ones that most people tend to be driven by are the bluebirds and also the house wrens or slash genie wrens. Those are by far the two most popular uh, uh, cavity nesting birds that homeowners like to attract uh, to their yard. And, and that's great. The, the, nest, the bluebird nest box program is credited with, with basically saving that species um, because there are other birds that like to nest in cavities that can outcompete certain birds. Uh, the house sparrow and English, uh, the European, European starling, uh, I, I did a program recently on invasives, and those two were introduced into this country and greatly impacted birds like the eastern bluebird, the western bluebird, uh, and purple martins, things like that, by out-competing them. So what we learned uh, is how to imitate what they want and place them and uh, give them a home that they can use and hopefully uh, some with restrictions keep out some of the other species. So what are some broad stroke advice? One is remember height. The height you place your box is really important. So for birds uh, that nest, especially in urban areas, uh, the number one predator that they face typically are cats, domestic cats. And they, a domestic cat can jump about four feet straight up in the air, some even a little bit higher. So I recommend placing your nest box so that, that hole, that cavity, is a minimum five feet five and a half, I mean, four and a half to five feet off the ground. And that will negate that cat being able to jump because what they'll do is sit under your box and time those birds coming and going and they'll jump up and snatch them right off the face of, of the box if it's too low. So make sure your boxes are high enough. And I know sometimes for, for people who use fence posts, um, they may need to put an extension board or something that, that raises that height because most fence posts are, are too low for the, the, the nest boxes you want. So uh, the direction of the hole is another major question that we get. Uh, remember, we emulate nature and having studied cavity nesting birds. And of course, woodpeckers are the construction workers of the forest, and they're the ones who drill uh, many, many of the cavities that other birds use, and of course they use. And what we know is that birds prefer the entry hole to be facing east to the southeast. They want the morning sun in their box, but they do not want the hot afternoon sun blaring in there. And they certainly don't want a cold north wind blow, get, getting into the box if they can help it. So uh, when you're planning it out, and I know sometimes that doesn't work for your best viewing for from your kitchen window or wherever you're wanting to look at your nest box but it is important for uh, several species of birds now if it's a, a, a nest box that's in the woods and fully shaded may not be quite as important but especially if it's out in the open uh, try to adhere to that east southeast you know early morning to 
early day sun, and then they get away from that hot afternoon sun. So those are really good broad stroke uh, advice. Now, what is the placement when we talk about that? What do you consider to be ideal placement for a box? Where to put it? Now, uh, because bluebirds are so popular, I usually uh, use a, a city park as an example of a uh, perfect nesting habitat. A golf course may do here too. Now remember, I'm only talking about from the standpoint of the trees and the grass. Uh, bluebirds really like open grass, open short grass for their hunting, and also scattered trees. They're not a forest bird when they're nesting. They don't nest deep into the woods. They like scattered trees. We cause word of caution when it comes to my when I said, you know, uh, uh, parks and golf courses, things like that look perfectly, but stay away from areas placing birdhouses where there are a lot of chemicals used, uh, pesticides, because you're taking away the food source that those bluebirds and other birds need to feed their babies. But, uh, you know, we, and we used to do do uh, environment assessments. And when we look at a, a plot of uh, habitat, one of the things we did was over 50% cover or under 50% cover. And that, you know, that can tell you the type amount of tree cover in an area. So uh, under 50% cover is really good for, uh, for bluebirds. Now, other birds like the Eastern screech owl, it needs over 50% cover. They, 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 they like scattered trees, but they also like in more in the trees. So they're there to be uh, more trees. And of course, when I talk about that four and a half feet off the ground rule, that's great for bluebirds because you're needing to check the box regularly. But a lot of other wild birds like, like the screech owl and the woodpecker species like flickers and red belly woodpeckers, the higher you place that box, the better, like the 10 feet or 12 feet up in the trees, they're more used to that. Now, now again, remember, you never say never. So I'm not saying birds won't use or a screech owl won't use a nest box that's only six feet off the ground. But I'm saying if he's got sight, choices, typically he's going to choose the one that's a little bit higher. Um, the next question I get a lot is, do I pole mount it or do I put mount it right onto a tree? Well, I when it comes for, to bluebirds, I really like pole mounting. I like them out away from the trees on a post for a couple of reasons. One, when you mount the bluebird box onto a tree, that becomes more desirable for a lot of other species to want to nest in it. Uh, and also it makes it more desirable for squirrels, which this one, uh, picture here has been, the, the face of the box has been chewed by a squirrel and they will do that. Whereas if, if the box is out on a pole away from the trees, that greatly reduces the amount of competition uh, that they're going to get. And there, lots of other birds will use that one and a half inch hole for a bluebird box, you've got you know, chickadees will use it, titmice will use it, Carolina wrens will use it, the tree swallows will use it. Depending upon habitat and where you place it, it can really reduce that competition. So uh, uh, this bluebird box on the left is out in the open. Um, it, it gets a lot of sun, but the bluebirds actually like that. So you, that's, again, where it's important to, for your placement. People ask about, the, do I paint it or not paint it? If it's in a hot area, if you're in the south and your your bluebird box gets, or your nest boxes get a lot of all day heat, sun, direct sunlight, heating it up, paint the roof of that box white. That's a, a really good method of uh, reducing the temperature inside the box. You can paint the whole box white if you like, but the roof is by far the most important. And Remember, never paint inside the box. You don't want those those dangerous fumes inside for the little ones because the uh, it, it, they're sen they're sensitive. The respiratory sens or systems are quite sensitive. Now, can you mount it to the side of your house? Yes, you can. Uh, I have seen this done before. This is a, a screech owl box mounted up on the side of a house, and it, it had screech owls in it. I know for a fact. Uh, so they uh, they will use it. The things I caution about mounting birdhouses onto your house or onto like your deck posts and things like that, stay away from high traffic areas because if you're constantly walking back and forth and disturbing, especially during when they're feeding babies, you're going to be disturbing those adults and they don't like that. I, they may nest there, but if you can avoid that by placing it out in the open more, I think you'll be more successful. In a case like this, mounted up really high, which is great. The screech owls loved it. And so it's an example of 
yes, you can mount it on the side of the house if you really, really want to. Another question I get a lot of is, do I have to have a baffle on my pole? I, I may not agree with some people who claim this. I, I, I don't think you have to have a baffle on your uh, pole for your bluebird boxes or other nest boxes. Uh, Mother Nature doesn't put baffles on trees and uh, dead limbs, things like that, where these birds nest. Uh, and yes, I don't want raccoons and black rat snakes getting into my nest boxes. But if you, you know, if you can't put a baffle on it or it, the, the choice comes down to, well, I've got great habitat and I can put this bluebird box, but I can't afford to put a baffle on it. Put the bluebird box out. Uh, if you can put a baffle on it, that may help. Uh, I, I advise you, you do that. It's a great advice, if, especially if you're constantly checking your, your nest boxes. A baffle may do you really, really well, but you don't have to do that. Like I said, nature doesn't provide them. And then you know, hanging from in trees, like the, this wren house. This is a great example of the difference between bluebirds like in the open country and the little house wrens really, really like the more wooded areas. And house wrens are a bird I'm, I'm, I put in here because of placement to guard against. Uh, the North American Bluebird Society has a statement out against uh, house wren houses, especially anywhere close to bluebird houses, because the, the little house wren uh, will... They're, they're super territorial and they will go in and they'll punch holes in your bluebird eggs and all your chickadee eggs and whatever. They do not want any bird nesting near their boxes. So if you have house wren boxes, keep them away from your bluebird boxes. Don't put them anywhere close. Remember, uh, bluebird boxes, especially uh, it, if you've got several of them, you need to keep those about 100 yards apart because the males will fight. Uh, but if you have other species, like if you have chickadees nesting uh, near a bluebird box, those boxes need to be about 25 to 30 feet away. Uh, tree swallows are a bird that will nest uh, with bluebirds if they're in uh, boxes or in open areas. And I've seen those actually boxes placed back to back, but about 25 feet apart is probably a good idea for the, the house, uh, the bluebirds, sorry, and the tree swallows. Now, and certain birds like the purple martins, they really, really like the wide open spaces. Nothing as tall as their box within 40 feet. They do like, the reason I have put this picture in is because placing it, they have the power lines there. And you know, the martins love to, to perch up on those power lines and, and places like that. Uh, for a bluebird, some people drive a stake or a T post in their yard straight just for the bluebirds to perch on to be able to hunt because they like to hunt from an exposed perch and then they like to fly down and gather, get the food. So you see the bluebirds looking down at the ground a lot from a, a perch and then go down and get the bug and come back. So having a spot for those uh, the bluebirds to perch is a really great idea uh, when you're with your placement of your, your bluebird boxes. I used to have a bird feeder pole uh, that I had uh, that was an old one I didn't use much for anything else near my bluebird box. Uh, and the males sat on that all the time. They love that exposed hunting perch. So placing versus shade versus uh, it, wide open. If you can in the early months, like April, that first nesting, nesting in March and April, if it's really cold, they really do tend to get a, a take a box that has got sun on it in the morning. So it warms up quickly. It, I, at my old house, they avoided that my box in April because it was in the shade in the morning. They loved that box in August when it was shady uh, during the hot weather and they would nest in it then. But the, it, the shade in the spring uh, was not great for them. And so placing, considering shade versus sun is another thing you should probably keep in mind when you're placing your book. I hope this helps. Lots of different species. Like I said, I'll put a link in below uh, for more uh, nest box especially dimensions and, and habitat, things like that for many species out west, up north, and, and uh, most uh, these house wrens and bluebirds are just two easy species to really concentrate on because they are probably the two most popular cavity nesting birds in urban areas. So it's a great idea for a program. Thanks for sending that in. If you would, give us a like, give us a share. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And don't forget to ring that bell so you get notifications as to when I'm going to be on. Until next time, let's talk birds.